Welcome to the Great Big Story Cupboard. With love from Adventure Island. And lots of love from Guess Who? That's right, Bonnie and Eppy. Are you sitting comfortably? Then let's begin. Autumn was slowly saying goodbye. The cold was sneaking its way into the days more and more, and the leaves had all but gone. Thimble the mouse didn't mind for now, though. She was all curled up, cosy and warm in her hidey hole that lay at the foot of the great big golden oak tree. She snugged down and tucked in under her soft, downy blanket, feeling very content in her little corner of the wood. Yawning and dozing, she listened to the quiet coming from outside. All she could hear was the occasional leaf softly landing on the frost-nibbled ground, as though they were whispering hello as they arrived on the woodland floor. Inside her little nest there was another sound. It was her old copper kettle slowly boiling and beginning to sing to itself, announcing that it was almost time to enjoy a nice cup of breakfast tea from her favourite china teacup that she would almost certainly have with a slice of seed cake made for her last week by her neighbour mouse, Lancelot. Just the thought of taking a delicious bite of it was enough to make her climb out of her warm bed, throw her crochet blanket over her little mouse shoulders and take a seat in the wooden rocking chair by the kettle. Having poured her tea and cut herself a generous slice of cake, Thimble began to turn her mind to the day ahead. It would be busy, she knew, because she would be heading out of her hidey hole into the wintry wood, through the bare trees, along the river bank, and then over the humpback bridge, taking the lane around the bend and heading into Hilltop Village that stood looking out on the rest of the world below. And Thimble would be going there because she was no ordinary mouse. She was, in fact, the Christmas mouse, the most special little mouse in the whole wide world. She drank the tea, nibbled the last few crumbs of cake, and began to get herself ready for the journey ahead. Her little adventure bag, the remaining seed cake wrapped up in brown baking paper, a tiny pad and pencil, and her crochet blanket just in case and then she squeezed out of the warm glow of her hidey hole and into the wood. She was bathed in soft silver sunlight that was tiptoeing its way through the banks of grey cloud overhead, as though the sun was reminding the world that it was still there for it in spite of the cold. With a small shiver, Thimble began to make her way through the wood and towards Hilltop Village. She scurried past the sleepy beech trees that stood like sentries along the path, and it wasn't long before she came to the river, with its bridge arching its stone back over the icy water flowing quietly beneath it. Crossing over, she heard a heartwarming sound coming from along the lane. It was Brahms the robin, merrily singing and pipping and twit twit twitting in the hedgerow that ran along the lane. He was easy to spot too because his red chest, a small flash of scarlet, popped out of the bare brown branches. Hello, Pip Brahms. Hello, Brahms, replied Thimble. Where are you going to on this fine day? asked Brahms. Into Hilltop Village to sprinkle the magic. Why not come with me? But Brahms wanted to enjoy his pip-pipping, so Thimble continued on her way into the village, her little claws tick-tack ticking on the tarmac of the pavements. To each house she went, and as she did, Thimble sneaked inside. With her tiny pad and pencil, she left a magic message, a reminder to every family of the joy and warmth of being together and the unknown adventures held in the palm of a new year ahead. 
her little pencil scratched almost silently across each piece of paper before folding them up and hiding them under cups, inside tins, poking out of gaps in floorboards, jutting out of cracks in walls, inside old jam jars, children's school bags or shoes. And no one saw her, no one heard her. Just a little Christmas mouse leaving tiny messages of happiness to be found. No one, that is, except Leopold, the ginger farm cat, who had been dozy daydreaming in his bed until out of the corner of his ear he had heard through the open door Thimble's little feet pad, pad, padding on the floor. Silently, Leopold slunk out of his bed and slipped through the door and waited to pounce. Meanwhile, Thimble had finished hiding her magic message under the breakfast bowls on the kitchen shelf and was just descending when something told her that all was not right. She listened very carefully, but all she could hear was the rhythmic tick-tock of the grandfather clock out in the hallway. She listened again and still tick-tock, tick-tock, out of sight, curled up with sharp claws and teeth. Leopold waited and waited. Just then Thimble did hear something. It was a bip, bip, bip coming from outside through the window. It was Brahms. What was he saying? Thimble listened again. Pip, pip, pip. Look out, look out. Cat, cat, cat. Clever, Brahms. Now there is one thing that you probably didn't know about Thimble. Not only is she the Christmas mouse, she also has something very magical indeed to help her as she goes about her messaging. Her crocheted blanket. Because it's not just any ordinary crochet blanket. Oh no, it's incredibly special for two reasons. Thimble's grandmother had made it for her. And even more special was that whoever wears it can do an extraordinary thing. They can become invisible. What, you don't believe me? Well, have you ever seen the Christmas mouse? Exactly. As quick as a flash, Thimble placed the crochet blanket around her and, bing, she vanished. And do you know, she climbed down and walked right under Leopold's nose, past his cat bed, out through the cat flap and back into the cold winter air where Brahms was waiting for her. And with that, both companions headed back to Thimble's hidey hole in the great big golden oak tree. And once Thimble had lit the rayburn, they settled down together to enjoy a cup of tea with the rest of the seed cake. Meanwhile, Leopold was still waiting to pounce. And it wasn't till it got very dark outside that he decided to give up and slink back to his cat bed. And it was only then that he discovered his own magic message that Thimble had left for him there while creeping invisibly out of the house. A magic message that wished him all the happiness in the world and better luck next time. <laughs>